ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு சூசன் அண்ட் ஜான் மேப் டியூப் திஸ் இஸ் பார்ட் டூ இன் ஓல்ட் கொஸ்டின் பேப்பர் சொல்யூஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் வி ஆர் ஸ்டில் ஆன் டூ தௌசண்ட் செவன்டி சிக்ஸ் சைத்ரா ஓகே ஸோ வி டிஸ்கஸ் த்ரீ கொஸ்டின்ஸ் இன் த லாஸ்ட் வீடியோ ஸோ ஐம் கோயிங் பிளானிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் ஃபோர் அண்ட் ஃபைவ் நவ் ஓகே ஸோ இஃப் த ப்ராபபிலிட்டி தேட் an individual suffers a bad reaction from a certain injection is 0.001 uh, after the corona covid season we are nowadays we have the vaccination and we always hear about these things some people have allergic reactions some people become very sick etc etc so this is a normal thing so there is a bad reaction to a certain injection and the probability that it might happen is 0.001 okay now they took a sample of 2000 people okay now look at this clearly the reaction let it be bad reaction let it be good reaction it can be counted integer wise we won't have 1 and 1/2 person suffering or we won't have 5.35 people suffering so clearly the distribution is discrete and i can see that this is a but uh, what do you call binomial distribution because i can see the bernoulli trail look at this let's say one person took the injection so that person might have a bad reaction or he might not have a bad reaction and since we are talking about bad reaction and the question is about bad reaction i'm going to call this to be a success remember it is just a label it has nothing to do with real life and no one will call getting a bad reaction to be success in real life and the probability of success is given to be 0.001 that means i can calculate q by working out 1 minus p so here we go we have the bernoulli trial the same experiment is repeated again and again and again and again and they took a sample of 2000 people so i'm 100% sure this problem can be solved with binomial distribution and if you're solving with binomial distribution the probability uh, first of all we have to write this let x be the discrete random variable associated with the number of people uh, who end up with bad reaction after taking the injection then probability of x equal to x is equal to 2000 cx into point 001 the whole power x and 1 minus point 001 the whole power 2000 minus x so if you want you can work out with this formula etc etc but i notice something do you remember binomial problems can be approximated into poisson problem uh, because i don't feel comfortable uh, like what you call working out with this this looks like a mess anyway nowadays you have calculators so you won't feel that mess but if you lived like what you call 20 30 years back when calculators were not that popular then you will understand the importance of approximation anyway in the question also it is not mentioned like you have to use this method or that method so you can use any method you like but still i feel i can approximate this into poisson so look at this do you know why i feel i can approximate into poisson point number 1 i saw a binomial problem where the probability is very small and second thing which i saw is n is very big 
okay now look at this thing. i have written p tends to 0 n tends to infinity you will be confused like how do i define infinity okay for such students i have a rough check and the rough check is we will find n into p and this value should be less than 5 so here we go 2000 into point zero zero 0.001 that gives me 2 ah that is less than 5 now there is one more way to check that is check whether n is bigger than 50 of course n is bigger than 50 so look at this the condition p tends to 0 and n is very large gives me a strong opportunity to reduce this binomial problem into a Poisson problem. Now, when we, when we use Poisson problem, we need the parameter of Poisson. The parameters of binomial are n and p. Okay, so remember, when we approximate a Poisson binomial problem into Poisson, the Poisson parameter lambda will be n into p. So once more, since p is very small and n is very large, we have a rough checking method. I am confident that I can change this binomial problem into Poisson problem with parameter lambda is equal to 2. So I am going to write x approximately follows PO Poisson distribution with parameter that is probability of x is equal to x is equal to e to the power minus parameter parameter to the power x the whole divided by x factorial okay now uh, like what you call it's up to you in sometimes sometimes i've seen in some question papers they will ask by using approximation or by using an appropriate method etc etc here the method is not mentioned so you can use any method you like anyway the first question is exactly three individuals will suffer bad reaction so look at this we have already mentioned that capital x denotes the number of people who will end up having bad reaction so in part a the required probability will be probability x is equal to three look x stands for the number of people who will end up with bad reaction and that is equal to 3 and the answer will be e to the power minus 2, 2 to the power 3 by 3 factorial. You can use a calculator and find the value 0 0.1804. Okay, now the second part, what is the probability more than 2? Okay, so this is what they want and more than 2 means it can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to make it 1 minus x less than or equal to 2. So that gives me probability of x equal to 0, 1, 2. And I have to add them up because they're mutually exclusive. And that's quite easy. You can do the calculation yourself. 1 minus and please mind the bracket if you don't put the bracket properly then you might get wrong answers so here we go e to the power minus 2 2 to the power 0 by 0 factorial e to the power minus 2 2 to the power 1 by 1 factorial plus e to the power minus 2 2 to the power 2 by 2 factorial take e to the power minus 2 outside anyway i got 0.3233 Please check if the values are correct. I did really fast. Yeah. Okay, let's move to the next question. If the inner diameter of a rod follows normal distribution. Now, I always feel that normal distribution and gamma distribution has one advantage. The students don't have to worry about the distribution. For example, if you look at the previous question, it is nowhere mentioned it is binomial. It is nowhere mentioned here to convert it into uh, Poisson. But the advantage of normal distribution and gamma distribution is the distribution will be clearly mentioned. Okay, now look at this. 
percentage is given that means the probability is given that means this is a question related to inverse probability okay so let's start let capital x be the continuous random variable associated with inner diameter of a rod okay now it is given that 7% of the rod has diameter less than 35 okay so probability diameter which we denoted by capital x less than 35 is 7 out of 100 that will be 0 0.07 and they are given one more thing inner diameter fewer than okay is equal to 0 0.89 Okay, now let's assume the distribution is n sigma square. Now look at this. Book to book, it will be slightly different. So be very careful. Sometimes they denote by mu and sigma squares. And some others prefer to write mu comma sigma. So to be extra careful. Yeah. Okay. And mu denotes the mean. Sigma denotes the standard deviation. Sigma square denotes the variance now i hope you remember the dialogue let x be any normal distribution then the transformation x minus mu by sigma will change it into the standard normal distribution so what we do is we are going to standardize it less than 35 minus mu by sigma 0 0.07 remember these problems are related to inverse normal probability because probability values are given we are going to find probability inverse and remember one very 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 important thing is when you find probability inverse the symbol should be less than or less than or equal to and I think the person who made the question paper was very caring. He made sure the students will not make any mistake. Normally in the question papers one will be less than, one will be greater than. Sometimes they will put both greater than but this particular question is like really nice. They put less than and less than so the students don't make any careless mistake. But be prepared, maybe for your exam it will be different. 35 minus mu by sigma is equal to 0 0.07 and probability of z less than 63 minus mu by sigma is equal to 0 0.89. So once more I am warning you don't forget the sign. Okay now I hope you remember how to work out problems on probability inverse. First what we do is we look at the probability value change it into percentage and 7 percentage means it is on the left. So the value 35 minus mu by sigma is going to be negative. Now what I do is I take the stat tables. I will go for the negative table because I know the answer is negative and I am going to find 0 0.07 so remember what you do is you have to do column search you can search any column you like and find the number very near to 0 0.07 when I reach 0 0.07 tell me to stop scrolling down 0 0.06 0 0.07 I guess we are very near by 1.4 0.07.4 aha uh -huh, here just crosses ok so I will color it for you so our answer should be somewhere between ok now you have to go above and find it ok so the possible answers are minus 1.47 minus 1.48 you can take this value or this value or I always go for the average value I feel that is better Anyway, I am going to write this is 1.475. Now the second equation. 
and draw one graph. 89% of the area is covered means it is on the positive side because half the area will be 50%. So this much area that means my answer will be in the positive table. Okay, so I have to find point. Okay, first what we do? We are going to find point 0.89. So let's go for a column search. 0.8485. Ah, I can see it crossed 88. So it should be somewhere near 89. Ah, here. 8888 and 89. So my answer should be somewhere here okay so let's go for the arrow 1.2 okay so my answers are 1.22 1 1.23 1 i'll go for the average value 1.225 1 anyway we end up with two equations 35 minus mu by sigma is equal to minus 1.475 63 minus mu by sigma is equal to 1.22 so let's cross multiply and get some equations minus 1.475 sigma plus mu is equal to 35 equation number 1 and 1.225 sigma plus mu is equal to 63. Now take your calculator, put it in equation solving mode, solve it. Anyway, I got the values sigma is equal to 10.37 and mu is equal to 15.3. So that's it. I'll be back with the next video. We'll discuss the remaining questions. So till then, my friends, bye.